Hey, how's it going, everybody? We're going to give everyone a few seconds to get logged on, and then we will begin our next episode of Tech Talk Live. Please stand by. We're going to give it one more minute, some people still logging in, so got a big group tonight, stand by. Hey, all right. Welcome everyone to Tech Talk Live, episode five, and we are still your host, amazingly enough. <laughs> My name is Troy Locke. I am the manager of technical training and technical support for Vega LLC in North America, and uh, I am still here in my lockdown garage, as Bo calls it. Um, I think the next episode, you'll see me in another location, hopefully. So uh, tonight, uh, let's enjoy the lockdown garage one more time as things start to reopen and places start to reopen and we get back to business. And 2,000 miles to the west of me, I got my buddy, Bo D'Angelo, manager of the Colorado Seminar Center. What's up, Bo? How's things, bud? How's it going, everybody? Really glad to see you. Thanks for being on this episode of Tech Talk Live. We're psyched. We've got a cool episode tonight. A couple of quick shout outs. Want to shout out to Rigid. We got Uwe, product manager from Rigid, Germany. Really cool to have them on board. And then as well, Dave Mahler, pipe fitter, pipe fitter out of Local 208. Thanks for joining us today, Dave. Psyched to have you on board. Glad you could make it. That's awesome. Thanks, everyone, for being here in episode five. And, and in case this is your first time joining the show, what this is, is this is a live show. So anything goes, fumbles, trips, slips, whatever, but it's also a chance for us to interact with the audience. So in your control panel, whatever you're using, whether it's your iPhone, because that's what I'm using, whether it's the laptop like Bo is using with his webcam and multiple cameras and things like that, but your tablet, whatever it may be, if you look at the functions on that screen, you're gonna see a Q&A or ask a question box. That's where we want you to type in your questions for us and we're going to try to answer every single one that we can live on every single episode that's what we do every single time so feel free to type in anything anything goes even if it's off topic of tonight's show um, but that's what we're here for to share knowledge of all the Vega products our our press systems all of the solutions that Vega manufactures in both Germany and the USA so with that uh, follow us on all of our social media platforms, follow us at Vega LLC on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. We even have a YouTube channel as well. Uh, you can follow me too, uh, at Trainer Troy on Instagram. I got some fun things on there and different interviews with, uh, with the plumbing community on Instagram. And we are actually gonna be transitioning this show to Instagram Live. So the next episode of Tech Talk Live will actually be on the Instagram platform July 29th at 12 p.m. Central. And we'll be doing this show once a month uh, on the Instagram platform. We've built a great following in that community. Some great customers of ours are there. There's a nice, you know, if you want to call them influencers or whatever, a plumbing, HVAC, you know, gas fitter community that we follow and they follow us. So we're going to start using that platform. So we hope you can join us and continue to watch Tech Talk Live, but through Instagram. Uh, let's see. So tonight's episode, I made some notes, Bo. It's been one of those days, man. I'm just 
It's been so busy supporting everybody. It's been fun. It's just been one of those days. I want to keep my mind tracked today. And I'm actually sitting on my tractor. So that's what's going on right now. I am sitting on my tractor doing this. This is definitely a raw, uh, down and dirty episode. <laughs> so, um, so tonight's episode is going to be about our mega press branch in, so press in branch connector. So it's a new innovative fitting system from Vega. If you're familiar with like strap alets, weld alets, those kind of things, right? It's a way to make a connection in a run up pipe without having to cut in and add a T. So we call it our mega press, press in branch connector. I know that's a tongue full, but that's what it is. It's the way we had a roll. We can't say Olet. That's a trademark name. So no Olet. So couldn't call it a press Olet, unfortunately. Um, so with that, what I want to do is I actually want to talk about the fitting system itself. I want to talk about what it is, like what is the branch connector? Uh, you know, what, what are the applications that it can be used for? And then Bo is going to take over and actually do a live demonstration on how this goes together fast, quick, and easy. And it's just another complimentary line of our mega press, you know, um, product line offering. So this is really great. So, so what we got here is I actually got a kit and inside that kit, I have all the different fittings. So, so this is actually the branch connector right here. So it has a three quarter inch threaded tap on there. Currently right now, that's what we're, we're uh, launching. We're looking at other, uh, fitting configurations and things like that. But for right now, it comes, all of them, there's different SKUs because there's different applications. All of them come with a three quarter inch threaded tap. With that, because it is Megapress, everything is consistent and the same, which is fantastic. So with Megapress, if you've seen some of our Megapress videos talking about Megapress online, this is a carbon steel fitting. It's got a zinc nickel coating and the color dots are just like the color dots on Mega Press. You've got the green dot and the white dot. So Bo's got a white dot right there, and I got a green dot right here. You might be asking yourself, where's the yellow dot, <laughs> right? Where is the yellow dot? Does this come for gas? Currently, there is no standard that we can test to, to because this technology is brand new. Vig innovated this. So this technology is brand new to the market, so we don't have a standard to test to, to get it CSA LC4 listed to then get it into the gas codes like our mega press G line. So we have half all the way up to four inch mega press gas fittings, which is awesome. And right now we're looking into how to make this mega press G, but that could be a long time because Vega loves and what we're good at is changing and evolving the industry through codes and standards so doing it the proper way so we're going through working with that seeing if we do we you know we're probably going to open up a project to do that but it takes time so i don't want to say hey this is going to launch next year or five years from now i do not give launch dates because you know you have to get the standard written approved you know tested all that stuff then listed then launched so it is a long process but right now we have the green dot fitting and we have the white dot fitting just like in our other complimentary line of mega press so that green dot indicates your EPM ceiling on it, and that white dot indicates an FKM ceiling on it. So all the same product approvals for those two product lines, Megapress EPDM and Megapress FKM, is going to apply to these branch connectors as well. And that ceiling element, because you're not pressing, you're not pressing onto the fitting, you're pressing this into a piece of pipe, that ceiling element is right there on that surface of that fitting. So this is actually going to press onto that surface of that pipe. And I can't wait till Bo shows you that, but I like to save that for the end because that's the fun stuff, right? Keep you hooked, keep you engaged. So um, with that, you see this little honeycomb right here, this honeycomb, oh, my camera's in reverse here. So this honeycomb, right? This is what's going to go in and pull in and press onto that pipe and suck that right in there. So there's two different fitting systems for this. Actually, there's multiple fitting SKUs for this because we can do schedule 10 pipe and we can do schedule 40 pipe with these. So different SKUs, right? Because that honeycomb is gonna be a little different in length. Not only that, the contour of the fitting to make sure that it's gonna seal onto that surface of the pipe, you're gonna have multiple SKUs for the different size range of pipes that we can be applied to. So you can do inch and a half all the way up to four inch, and you could also do six inch, right? So think about that. You can do inch and a half all the way to four, and then again, you can do six inch, we excluded five 
you know, bow, you know, it's not very common, right? You know, five inch isn't really common out there. It does exist, but it's not one of the most common piping, you know, that's stocked in a pipe yard and used for applications. So uh, this is going to be half to four, uh, inch and a half to four, and then six inch. So with that, when you order the SKUs and you order these fitting systems, you're going to make sure you're ordering it for the right schedule pipe and the right size of pipe. But they're all currently going to come with that three quarter inch threaded tapping on there and VT. And just add something, Troy, and the correct sealing element. So you've got multiple ways to order this fitting. You got to order it the way you want it. FKM or EPDM, which Troy will get into. Schedule a pipe and saddle size, right? Your tap is going to be the same across the line. Troy will get into more tap sizes potentially coming later on here. Absolutely. And that's true. The other tap sizes we're hopefully looking at is trying to maybe go all the way up um two uh two inch but you know we're we'll we'll try to sit there and get um what's going on my computer sorry about that um we're going to try to start with the threaded adapters and get those out there more you know we've been thinking about trying to how to how do we make it a hub style fitting how, and then again how to get gas so there's going to be multiple product ranges uh coming up that you'll see uh, later on in the future so but right now three quarter inch tapping on there it's going to be great all for you know the different residential commercial applications. If you need to put in a thermal well, if you need to do a uh, drain down, put in a drain, drain things down and fire sprinkler. You know, I'm thinking if I'm in a parking garage and I sling up my 20 footers with couplings, I now don't have to add T's and drops and things like that. I can actually just put in the branch connector, thread in my fire sprinkler heads. We do have UL listing and approval for that and then we are pending fm right now uh due to covid that was actually that testing was put on hold but they are now back open up um, the third party uh, industry that we use and we will be starting testing again so hopefully later this year in 2020 we will then get our listing for fm but if you're looking at a ul uh, approval for fire sprinkler we already have that so that's great just think of a lot of hydronic applications too. If you're running VAVs, running higher delta T's, you can tap off the main. You got a three to quarter inch branch at a 20 inch delta T or 20 degree delta T. You've got a you know 75 gallon per minute flow rate, but you can run that de delta T higher under VAVs. So a lot of options there. Something else. What if you walk into an old building and it's a commercial building and you're trying to figure out how the system's performing. You got an old circulator in there or there's a circulator in there, no peats plugs, no tappings on the volutes, no tappings on the flanges. How are you gonna get uh, you know, a pressure drop across that, that circulator and find out what you got going on across the system? You could easily tap in upstream and downstream of that circulator, get your pressure gauges on there, do a quick test and find out. And this is something you could do quickly where in the past that would not have been possible. So. Think outside the box on these. It's a tiny little box, but think outside the box. A lot of really cool applications. Absolutely. Thank you, Bo. I'm actually just throwing my computer to the side here. Don't need that anymore. <laughs> All right, let's get down to it. So uh, what I want to do is I want to actually show you the tooling kit for this because there is going to be um, an attachment that's going to go with your existing press tool. And this press tool that you're gonna be using is gonna be a standard press tool. I believe Bo is gonna be demonstrating the rigid RP340 uh, with this. So it is this uh, swage adapter. This adapter actually fits into your standard press tool and we recommend the RP340 for that. Uh, I believe it also works in the RP330 as well. Um, but in the older tools like the 320, things like that with an old school battery platform, it's just one of those things, just like the booster. When we talk about the booster, um, that's gonna be you know the 330 and 340. So with the tool kit that you're gonna purchase for the Megapress branch in connector is this you can either order it from Vega's catalog and it's going to come in a hard black case and with all the accessories that I'm going to go through right here in one second or you can actually order it through rigid so there's a Vega you know Vega rigid branded toolkit in our catalog and then rigid has a soft nice soft case type you know briefcase looking kit as well we actually have both of them at our shops uh, so both of them work really well the one I guess 
difference and benefit may be with a rigid case is it actually comes with the different uh, vacuum cleaner attachments because Bo's going to demonstrate that where the drill guide actually has an attachment for vacuum so you can suck out the shavings. So as you're drilling, you're not going to get all those shavings into the piping system, which if they build up and they're not flushed out could cause pitting and corrosion and things like that into your pipe. So it's actually very important to actually, you know, suck out all those shavings and flush out your system. So the pipe guide, the drill guide, so the drilling guide actually has an attachment for your vacuum cleaner, your shop vac, whatever it is. So that's actually really cool. So rigid gives you those adapters, all various adapters. In our case, the difference that rigid doesn't have is we have a spot where you can put the fittings. So we have a clean little case where I can put six of the different fittings inside a box and things like that. So really that's the only difference. Other than that, everything else is identical. So perfect. Well, Bo, if you have nothing to add there, I'm going to jump right into this uh, toolkit here and see what I got going on. So obviously they come with an instruction manual. Most people just kind of throw those right to the side right there, you know, use them as knee pads. So don't, don't, don't need to read that. Don't, don't need that thing. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we'll teach you how to use it. And if you, and if you toss the manual to the side, you can actually reach out to my uh, tech team at uh, tech support at vega.us. You can even give them a call at 603-882-7171. That's the direct number to New Hampshire. I still can't remember for the life of me, Bo, the corporate numbers. I really can't. <laughs> 800-976-9819. And you know what? You're right, Troy. No one's going to use the manual. What they're going to do is they're going to whip out their phone. Okay, and they're gonna pull up this video on YouTube after today. It's gonna be faster. It really will be, absolutely, it really will be. So right here, the case that I got, I have the rigid case, I mean, I have the, the Vega case. So this case, like I said, is a hard case. It actually has rigid Vega stamp right on there. And then I'm gonna pull out each of the different components for you so you can see what goes on in here. The, the most important part, I have my arbor and my drill bit on there, right? So this is gonna be for my drill. Now, there, there are two different arbors or, you know, hole saws that you can buy for this. So if you have a regular drill, the chuck here, you can buy it for the regular drill, but uh, Rigid actually has a skew for like SDS, like, uh, like uh, that rotary hammer drill. So you actually can get a different chuck for this. So what's great about this too, so you got your drill bit right here and you got your pilot bit. So these are all replaceable. Everything, maybe that manual is handy because all the replacement part numbers are in there. But we also have them online too and we have them in our catalog and Rigid also has them on their online catalog too. So uh, that pilot bit that's right in here, this drill bit, if you can see that. What you can't see by eye is what's cool about that is that bit is actually staggered. It's offset a little bit. And it's not to drill a crooked hole or anything like that or mess with you while you're drilling. It's, it catches the piece that you're drilling, what, what I would call a coupon. It catches your coupon. It catches that piece that you're drilling out. And so it doesn't fall into the piping assembly. So that's actually a really cool design there. So it's not magnetic or anything like that. It's just that pilot bit is slightly altered. So therefore, it's going to keep that bit into, the, you know, that coupon, that piece of metal into that fitting, right, into this drill bit. So the drill bit right here, replacement, so it's a one inch, so one and one sixteenth drill bit. So you can get the rigid part number there, catalog number. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, I promote rigid. I like them, but if you have any size right here, Lennox, you know, Diablo, whatever you can get on there. I mean, obviously the blade's made for it, made for the replacement, made for cutting into to steel, made for that application. So always use the right blade or right drill bit for the right application. That's all I'm gonna recommend there. So you can get the different bits. So you got your drill bit right here, you got your auger. Hey Troy. With that, yeah, go ahead brother. One, one thing on that drill bit uh, for you for all that are on the, the webinar today, you're not going out to Home Depot or Lowe's or your local home store or Menards, wherever you are to pick up a, you know, inch and 16th bit. That's not a normal <laughs> size. So. Just a heads up, that's the size you must drill for this. Don't go grab an inch and an eighth and think, ah, it's close enough. Do not do that. You need the right hole saw. So if you think you're gonna be doing a lot of these, it's a good idea to have an extra hole saw or two in your kit, okay? Rigid will thank you for it. You'll thank yourself for it. 
don't think you can get by with another hole saw. I can tell you, we put, we run a lot of these. We go through scads of these branch adapters. Now there's a new branch adapter, branch connector credential that's now available on Vega.us. So you can go there and get a Vega credential and trained on this and a card that says you've been trained on it. So we're doing a lot of these and we go through some hole saw bits. So I'm telling you, use the right saw. That's all I had. I have to get off my soapbox on that one, but I'm afraid somebody will try and grab an inch and an eighth and say, yeah, it's close enough. Not really. No, absolutely. That's a great point. I'm glad you brought that up because you're right. I mean, I have a whole bag full of drill bits and you're right. I don't want to dig through there and grab one that's close enough. Like you said, absolutely. Make sure it's the right bit because the design of that bit, the design of the drill, the design of the, the drill guide, is specifically for this branch connector because the way that honeycomb piece on that fitting and Bo is going to demonstrate this install the way that that swage tool presses it pulls it into place if it's too big of a hole it's going to rip it right out so you want to make sure you use the right drill bit so I'm glad Bo you know emphasized that highlighted that because that is that's very important just curious Troy how many of those drill bits you have in a giant bag are actually sharp <laughs> uh, actually, uh, probably only 25% of them because there was this uh, really cool mom and pop place that I would go to and they would, instead of buying new drill bits, it was actually cheaper for me to have them sharpen. And then they put that nice little wax coating on top to protect them and you peel that off later. So uh, that's why I have a whole bag of drill bits because I kept going to this mom and pop shop and having them sharpen because it was actually cheaper. So, but, but only 25% of them probably sharp. <laughs> All right, so the next piece of equipment that is in this tool case, this is your drill guide, right? So this chain is gonna wrap around the pipe. So this chain, then you tighten this down right here with a crescent wrench with a, an adjustable pair of pliers that'll tighten that around that pipe. And again, that chain is gonna be long enough, just like a rigid pipe vise, right? Think of it as a rigid pipe vise. That chain wraps around that pipe and you tighten it down for the size of pipe needed. Like I said, this fitting system is for inch and a half to four and even does six inch. So that's going to be what this chain and this pipe guide is going to fit on and be contoured. You can even see this little contour here on this. So that's what sits on the contour of that pipe right there. This top piece, this is for your vacuum cleaner attachment. So you put your vacuum cleaner on here. And then one really cool thing about this guy, see this notch right here? Your drill bit, your arbor will actually fit in here and it keeps it perfectly aligned and you can't push it too far in. You can't get off, off kilter or drill at an angle or anything like that. Keeps that line right up and your drill spinning. So really great design there. And that's why, again, this kit goes hand in hand. I don't want to sit there and try to drill by eye or anything like that, or use another piece of equipment. So, so you got your, your drill guy, you got your drill bit, you got everything there. Then what you're gonna have in this, is your swage tool. So this is the piece that actually goes into your press gun. You see, this is where the pin sits in. So this slides into your press gun. You put that pin in, that holds it in place, and you're gonna take your fitting, all right? You're gonna take your branch connector. That's gonna sit like that. So see, I have it sitting on there. This is an add, this is another piece. This is what pulls this fitting in during the pressing action. And you just hand tight. You don't need to use a wrench to get this down or anything, just hand tight. So this is the assembly right here. That fitting just sits right onto the swage tool, right? And then that goes right in and makes that press. But one cool thing that we have is a fitting guide. Because if you're standing on the pipe, and when Bo shows the demonstration, you're standing on that pipe with that press tool, you want to make sure that you're perfectly aligned, right? You're centered. You're not cocked to the left or the right or anything like that or up and down, right? You want to make sure you're on there straight. So we actually have different size fitting guides or pipe guides, right? They're, they're going to wrap around this fitting. And it it's going to look better when Bo does it, but they hold it right into place. So it wraps it around that pipe, holds this in place. I have my tool there and I make that press. So kind of put that on actually backwards here, Bo, from my garage and not on a piece of pipe. It's a little different. So there we go. That's how that works right there. Right? So it holds it into place. This would be where the pipe was. It wraps around that piece of pipe and holds that right into place. So 
So you have all the accessories you need to make a perfect press and it doesn't take long at all. You're gonna be blown away about how fast this is. To be honest, the slowest part of doing any type of branch connector like this, whether it's a weld outlet or straplet, it's drilling the hole, right? But that's why if you use the right drill bit, you have a nice drill guide, things like that, you can actually speed that process up, make sure you have the right kind of drill, right? I got my rigid drill and my handle, and I, I have a powered one that I use personally, but again, battery powered is great too. But, you know, just have the right drill, right drill bit, and that's going to dictate the time that it takes to drill that hole. Everything else is going to take you seconds to put together and do, and the press is within four seconds. So very fast. Nice, Bo. So did I miss anything, Bo? Did I, uh, you know, did I miss any technical information, anything I think at all? I mean, this is about nailed it. You about nailed it got all the finer points there so we can do a demo and show people how to use it um, people are asking what hat you're wearing what brand is that hat? oh awesome yeah so actually this is for so when I was on the field um, I, I've been in all different directions but this was when I'm my commercial day so this is Miro so M-I-R-O uh, that's a commercial custom uh, hanger company so they manufacture and they actually build custom hanger assemblies for chillers, rooftop units, um, you know, the nice roller uh, hangers and things for gas piping and welding and things like that. So I used to use uh, their product when I was on the field commercially. So I got this hat at a trade show. I love it. Now, I don't know what brand the actual hat is, but if you're just wondering about that logo, it is actually for commercial hangers for piping systems. Nice, Troy. I don't usually wear hats, so you know. Uh, all I, I do is wear. I love wearing hats. This is this has been the great part, Bo, about working from home. I haven't had to wear a polo shirt, and I haven't had to comb my hair. I grew out my beard. I wear hats every day. I mean, I, I'm kind of digging it, you know. I see a dress code giga uh, change coming up here, you know. So maybe I, don't know. I won't hold my breath. I won't hold my breath. I'll, maybe maybe we could persuade HR. Maybe maybe. 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 <laughs> cool. So you want to see this thing go in? Oh, absolutely. I think that's the best part, you know, of this is actually seeing it because once you get a visual, I mean, going through what I just went through is great and understanding the parts and pieces, but to see how fast and easy this is, I mean, you get, you're going to be blown away. I mean, it's going to save just like all of our fitting systems, uh, you know, it's saving you time. It's making you more efficient, more effective. It's, it's safer faster cleaner so that's the whole point with this awesome well if you look behind me here you see that let me get out of the way i'll just step out of the way so you can see that this pipe right here is angled and if you notice that giant gauge there which i'm going to get close on in a second here is sitting at 200 psi so what we did and this system's live right now what we did is we built up a test rig and we'll be continuing to use this moving forward. It's just another experience you can have when you come to training at Vega. you can get this hands-on experience. But right now uh, we did some deflection because I wanted to see just how strong the branch adapter was. Now I can tell you, and I just want to make this really clear. If you put a piece of pipe, SCED 40 pipe into a branch adapter and you yard on it and it's, you know, that's about what, four foot long there. Uh, you yard on that thing, you can work it back and forth and you could rip it out of the pipe. That's a fact, okay? I'm not gonna kid you about that. It's not welded onto the pipe, it's pressed onto the pipe. You can wiggle a mega press fitting off. It takes a heck of a lot of effort. You've seen us destroy them at 600 PSI. We bent them at 200 at our operating pressure and, and then took them up to 600 PSI after the bend. You'll see that here live too. We do it all the time. But eventually you could, you could pull a pro press fitting off of a piece of pipe, you wiggle it back and forth enough, you're gonna destroy the fitting and destroy the pipe. So that's just you know, simply how this works. That's just the nature of the system. But that's a heck of a lot of deflection uh, that I was yarding on at that point. I was like, I don't wanna pull it anymore, anymore and take a shower because I'm sitting over there at 200 PSI. And there's probably a little bit of air uh, up in that uh, pigtail for the gauge. So that's my point about that. But, it can handle a lot. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and mute for a second. I'm gonna drain this thing down and we're gonna actually drill another one. I'm gonna hook up the vacuum attachment. We're gonna suck out all the, the debris 
and I'm gonna do this test again, and we're gonna do another deflection test so you can see it live. So I'm gonna get right to it. I'm gonna switch cameras. I'll stay muted when I'm ready to start the test. Um, just for a second here, I will uh, come back on. So I'm just gonna mute out for just a sec, and we're gonna dive in. Perfect, thank you, Bo. Definitely looking forward to seeing this. And as Bo says, I mean, everything we do uh, with Vega, we actually do these uh, performance tests and torture tests and, and, you know, performance tests. And actually the standards do this as well. So we have the IATMO PS117 performance standard for Press Connect. You know, there's a IC LC1002. You know, there, there's all these different performance tests in uh, L CSA LC4. I mean, I can go on and on all the different ones that we are actually listed and have certificate compliance to, and they do destructive testing basically it's performance testing it's seeing what kind of safety factors are built in and we actually anytime Vega launches a product we want to make sure that we exceed those performance standards not just meet so you can actually see there's uh, plenty of safety factors built in when it comes to the pressure testing you know when it comes to bending vibration seismic activity uh, deflection tests things like that so but like Bo said give anything you know, enough wiggle, you know, slim, whatever, you you know, try to wiggle something back and forth enough, you'll break it off, whether it's a sweat fitting, threaded fitting, you know, anything. So, but uh, there's performance standards out there. These all exceed those performance standards, which is fantastic. You can pressure test our systems. I mean, Bo has it there for 200 PSI. You can actually pressure test hydrostatically up to 600 PSI if need be. Now, most of the time your codes is one and a half times your working pressure and not less than, you know, X, Y, Z, depending on your code, right? So just follow that. And we follow all those guidelines as well. Bo, I'm loving your assembly. It looks so cool, man. He's getting all set up right there. He's got to reduce down for his gauge. That's the thing with this too. I mean, you know, vertical pipes, horizontal pipes. Um, you know, if you got industrial painted coating pipe, that's fine too. Car carbon steel, black steel, galvanized steel. Uh, these fittings are all going to work for those types of pipes. And remember, again, it's SCED 10 and SCED 4. So you can see how much I deflected that. Whoop, let me back it away. You can see that it's the fitting's pretty bent. Uh, that's pretty impressive. By the way, Troy, just a little tip. Never let Colton tighten anything for you. Oh my God, he's like 6'4", 250 pounds, a giant wall of muscle, and it was Colton tight. So I had a hard time getting it apart. <laughs> yeah, tell him he doesn't have to bury the threads, right? You know, but I got oh. a pickle jar he can open if he wants for me. Fitters like that stuff tight, man. They like to wrench that stuff up. The madman. Hey, they don't want any callbacks, man. They want to get the job done, make sure it's leak free and get out of there. That's right. Is that one tight? I don't know if it's tight or not. Righty, righty tighty, lefty, loosey, Bo. I know you've been out yeah, of the no, for I, a while, but it's still. <laughs> I don't know if my cap is tight here, Troy. So. <laughs> oh, man. And I'm trying to keep that branch adapter backed up. So like Bo said, he's actually in one of our, uh, he's in the Colorado seminar center. He's in one of the workshops, one of the two workshops that they have, massive workshops. I mean, his building's 26,000 square feet. So when we finally get to open up and conduct in-person trainings again, you not only have the classroom experience where you get the, you know, theory, uh, but we, we try to do more of the hands-on. So we break that training up. So you actually have an interactive learning center that's there as well for all of our products. And then uh, on top of the interactive learning center, there's workshops where you get to go in just like Bo's doing right now and physically put all the stuff together from pro press to mega press to pex press to radiant. Uh, so that's where Bo is right now. And you get to get your hands dirty, learn how to install it with us. So that way, when you go on the field, you are a professional and you know, you got it down to a science when, it, when you're out there putting that stuff together. Just draining down here. This is a lot of pipe, a lot of water in it, and I didn't want to 
have to suck water into the um, into the vacuum. So just because I got a bag in this one. So I'm just doing that for my vacuum's benefit. Obviously, if you got water in the piping system, you can run a wet vac and you'll be fine. So I just didn't want to pull the bag out. So uh, we're just gonna go ahead and get a little bit of water out. I got a hose here to fill it back up. So now you can see our gauge. You should be able to see what I'm doing here. And we've got a couple of things we wanna do here. Make sure we have got right tools. First, I've got my drilling guide that Troy showed you, which is basically a small pipe vise. Okay, that's gonna allow me to attach this branch adapter. So I'm gonna actually just do it right here off of the uh, pipe right next to the other branch adapter. And just one thing I wanna point out is you've got a minimum spacing between your branch adapters that you need to work with. And hey, hey, Bo, uh, not to interrupt you, but I think we lost your camera. At least I did. I don't know if anybody else is seeing that. Sorry for the technical difficulties, but there we go. Okay, perfect. You're back. Awesome. I'm sure everybody oh, else Oh, that's is. really weird. I, I must have uh, tapped my laptop. It's got a, uh, uh, a okay. touchpad on it. So when I went over to unmute, I must have tapped my laptop. I apologize. So no anyway, worries, what I, I just want to make sure I didn't miss it. Yep. So anyway, so you want to look in the manual and look at your minimum distance for how far you can be from the branch adapter. There's a couple of things that you need to consider. One is the distance from the branch adapter with regard to the angle. So in other words, if you're putting in an adapter angled to another adapter or within the proximity of another adapter, as well as adjacent the adapter. So really important distinction there. And again, check the manual for the branch connector, uh, the actual installation manual. So um, inch and sixteenth, uh, wrench will actually snug up my, my vise and I'm ready to drill. So one thing you can do, and I'm going to prep this after the fact, but you can prep beforehand. You're still going to need to prep after. So I just do it in one step and I'm going to go ahead and put my vacuum adapter. Troy, you can see me. Okay. Right. Or see what I'm doing. Okay. Right. Yep. I can definitely okay, see you, brother. So put my vacuum adapter in and I'll switch my vacuum on when I'm ready to drill. As Troy pointed out, your drill guide is going to stop you from going in too far. Currently I've got a replacement hole saw on this. This is a Lennox. So um, again, you can use another hole saw on there. That's perfectly fine. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to switch the vacuum on. It's going to get a little noisy. So I'm going to go ahead and mute for a second. And one thing I'll tell you before I start is, is that I'll run the drill in high speed until I get the pilot tip started in the pipe. And then I'm going to go to low speed. Remember when you're uh, drilling steel, you want to go with a low speed uh, on your drill. So whether you're using a mag drill or just a good old handheld. All right, we're back. So I'm looking down into the pipe and I wish you could see this, but there's water about, I don't know, a third of the bottom of the pipe has water in it. And there is not a single shaving in there. It's awesome. So the vacuum attachment works really, really well. Uh, we, you know, of course we've tried it on dry pipe, but I've got nothing in here. So really important distinction there, the coupon or the cookie, whatever it is you want to call it, is right there, whoops, reverse camera angle there. You can see it right there in the end of the hole saw. 
Okay, so I can go ahead and spin that hole saw off and pull that cookie out of there and I'm good to go. So uh, if you absolutely have to be 100% sure, I can tell you this works pretty effectively, but if you have to be 100% sure about that coupon not getting into your pipe, especially if you had a vertical riser that you were tying into, then I would recommend installing a quarter inch hot tap bit. Uh, they're easy to, to find, they're very expensive. You know, a hot tap bit's gonna run you 30, 40 bucks versus just a standard uh, pilot bit's gonna be, you know, five bucks or six bucks, but worth the investment. It's got that little hook on it, it'll keep your coupon, but not really necessary if you've got access to the pipe or you're doing something horizontal, you can pull it out of there with a magnet or whatever if it did drop in. But uh, we haven't had that, that issue, but I'm just, as a precaution again, don't want to find out the hard way, right? Troy, can you still hear me okay? I can hear you good. Okay. So, and All right, that's a so. good point. That's a good point too, but I haven't had that uh, pilot bit or anything drop, uh, drop a metal coupon in that pipe yet. So, but to Bo's point, just pay attention to it and make sure, but uh, that entire setup, uh, it works really slick. Yeah, it works very, very well. It's a very, very effective tool. So look, I've got barely any burr on here. I've got nothing in the pipe and there's like dust in there. It's beautiful. It's nice and pretty. I'm just going to go ahead and clean that up with just a little bit of sand cloth. Okay, you can use a wire brush. If anyone's seen the Vega corporate video that you can find on our website for the press and branch connector, they use a wire brush. It works as well. Uh, these sharp edges here really don't come in contact with the sealing element, which is good but I'm gonna sand it off because I want smooth pipe surface. With any press system, we wanna have a nice smooth surface to press on. So I'm just gonna run the sand cloth over it, okay? And it's gorgeous. I mean, nice and smooth there. I'm very confident in this press. So from there, I have my three parts that I need to make this press plus the press tool, and I'll show you a cool life hack in a second here. But you'll need your two and a half inch, these clamps are size specific. So this guy's a two and a half. I don't know if you can see the printing on it, but they're just uh, laser cut, laser engraved clamps that help you keep the branch adapter on the, the piping system. And they work really well if you push them either towards or away from you. But what you wanna do is set the clamp on the pipe. You'll notice that the clamp has an opening here that is larger on this side than it is on this side, okay? And that opening is made for the branch connector. So we're just gonna set that, uh, that, that clip on there and just let it rest on the piping uh, for right now. And I've got my pulling tool here. And again, as Troy showed you, we're gonna slip that tool end through the branch adapter's threaded side or branch connector. I keep saying adapter, it's a connector. And then we're gonna go ahead and hand tighten the pulling mandrel or the drawing, drawing bar, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, we, we can come up with a million names for it, but I don't know. We'll, we'll, have to, uh, we'll have to take a vote on that one. And then we're going to drop it through the hole on the clamp. At which point, the, what's really cool, these, uh, these branch adapters are actually beveled on the side. Let me see if I can show you close up and get in there tight. I don't know if you can see that, Troy. Yeah, it looks like you can see it. See the bevel on right, right above the run, wrench boss right there? That's to make the clip slide nicely over the branch adapter so you're not fighting it. So Vega did a phenomenal job engineering this. I got to give Vega Germany a lot of credit on this one. A fantastic job in the design and execution of this. You think of the engineering that went into this. You know, we're talking about the hole saw size. That hole saw is very specific. You know, they had to think about how, what the thickness of the bird cage is or the, the, the honeycomb, what, you know, what size hole, how big is the mandrel gonna be? Cause you're gonna see the mandrel's gonna pull out. So it's really a really cool engineering feat. A lot of, uh, you know, a lot of uh, trigonometry and calculus to figure this out for sure. But anyway, I've got my uh, clamp here and I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate that around. And now that sucker's locked on the, the pipe, the saddle's the correct, in the correct position, and I'm ready to go ahead and make my press. So, and a cool life hack for those of you that use the classic, the ubiquitous rigid tri-stand. I'm like, I really want a way to hang my 340 on the tri-stand, and I figured out you can actually just run the pin through the tray like that and hang your rigid 340 there or your compact tool. Now, I'm sure that's not a rigid approved method, 
so rigid, we'd like a hook on this, but for right now, that's a cool hack. So I thought you guys would appreciate that. Make sure your tool is powered on. Green means go. I'm gonna insert the tool over the pressing ram. I'm gonna drop my pin in and watch how quickly this press takes place, okay? Just that fast and we're done, okay? All set, ready to go. Pull my tool out, secure my rigid 340 back to, oops, back to my little spot on my tri stand. And sorry, I'm gonna walk around the front here and pop that guy off of there. And we're ready to go ahead and pressure test this system up. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and fill this guy. And I've got my other piece right here. And I've got my hose. I'm gonna hook up our hydrostatic again. It's a quick connect, make that fast and easy. Learn that little trick from our quality guys out in McPherson. Shout out to those guys, they're good people. And we're gonna go ahead and fill this guy up just to make it a little faster. And tomorrow we're gonna to give Ricky a hard time for not plumbing water into our workshop or this workshop. We got it in the other one, but not this one. And that's good fun because he just gets so, you know, wound up when we give him a hard time about it. Okay, so it's just like filling, filling my Harley gas tank. It always sprays out. <laughs> and for the audience members that don't know who Ricky is, he's a technical trainer on Colorado, but he actually was the project uh, sorry, I was getting a phone call. Weird. Uh, I got kicked off here. I was, uh, he was the uh, project manager for plumbing there. So there's the foreman running those. So that's foreman, why we like yeah. to give him a hard time. Yeah. So anytime, anytime there's a plumbing issue, we love to give him a hard time just because it's fun, you know, but, uh, but the building's phenomenal. There's, there's uh, you know, we just like to bust on him. He's one of the most experienced and competent 35 year old plumbers I've met in my history of doing this for he, you know, he's as old as I've been doing this and he can outplumb me night and day. He's amazing. So a lot of credit for that guy. I got a lot of respect, but he's just such a good guy. Uh, you know, that he, in fact, he just adopted a kid because the parents wouldn't take care of the kid. They abandoned the kid at the hospital. So Ricky adopted a kid because he didn't want to see the kid go without a family. That's the kind of guy he is. All right, so I'm just gonna thread this in here. If it threads, I don't know, I feel like maybe one of my threads is broken or something on this pipe. I didn't grab a metric branch adapter. Righty tighty lefty loosey, right, Troy? That's just it, that's just it. That's the magic thing. And <laughs> Although that would have been yeah. hilarious if you did grab some metric stuff and you didn't realize. <laughs> Yeah, one thing I will say about the branch adapter that I would love Vega to, and you know, listen, we can tell you this all the time at, at Vega, we are critical of our own products. Uh, one thing I wish that it had was more like a hex sided wrench boss on the, on the adapter because you're limited to positions as to where you can get your wrench and you might not be able to do that in certain cases. So, uh, you know, really important uh, distinction in there. Just think about that. When you're putting one in, are you going to be able to get on it and hold back or, you know, you're going to need a cheater or whatever. But I'm going around a little bit more here. I want to get this guy facing this way behind the gauge. And I've got a piece of three quarter here all prepped and ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and pull my tool again. Look at that. It's so handy right there on the tri stand. And Press it up. Now, one cool thing about mega press this before was deflection. Remember, with mega press, the fitting is always going to want to try and go in the direction of the opening of the jaw or ring. Really important thing. Well, in this case, the, the fitting is static. So the pipe has to move in the opposite direction. So if I press downward on this, my pipe is going to level out. And I want you to see that happen. Just watch the pipe move. Isn't that a beautiful thing? So cool. Training is everything, right? It's new technology. It's not that difficult to learn, but sometimes we need to know the tricks of the trade to get us by. So I'm going to go ahead over here, drop a bucket in front of this guy and put some water in and we're going to put it under pressure. Uh, yeah. 
plumber's eyes getting rusty, I guess. All right. One is open and V2 needs to close and we are ready to fill. Yeah. All right, I got a helper in the background. I'm cheating today. I just wanted to say. Just, just make sure he's six feet away. Just kidding. Come on now. There we go. Good. Give me a little bit more. There we go. A little bit more. Okay, we got water. We're good. Surprised nobody's asked about these cool new Vega High Viz gloves with leather palms. But I guess nobody's into the high vis. I'm just gonna have to use them on my motorcycle. Right? Well, they're just gonna have to come to the uh, seminar center to get themselves some of those gloves, right? And I, yep. and I thought I saw you promoting the back of your shirt too. I thought you were doing that on purpose when you started turning around and showing me, you know, do you even press bro t-shirts? So I think you're doing some advertising for the Vegas swag. I think that's pretty cool. I wouldn't dream of doing that. Okay. So, all right. So let's take it up to 200. And there she goes. We're going, we're going. Now the other fitting that I torqued on, you know, is when I pulled it out, I actually torqued it more so it might leak. So again, you know, if you yard on these things, they will pull. I mean, they just will. And there's no way for me to repress it. So that's the other thing, like mega press, you can repress. You can't repress these. So but we're still going up. We're holding. Okay, we're going to go to our operating pressure max of, whoa, 200, you're way above me. And that's perfect. So, and you can just drop it off a little bit. Oh, right there. And then just lock it in. Yeah, there you go. You're good. So there we go. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and yard on this. And you can see that it can take a lot of deflection. In fact, now the mega press fitting is bending and pressure's going up. Yeah. So pretty tough little system there. Uh, the pressure went up because I've compressed the water that's in the pipe static. So, cause I've made the space essentially smaller. So there you have it. Mega press, press in branch connector. That's awesome, Bo. And, and the one thing I like to point out with that deflection test, you know, looking at any type of, you know, strap -a -led or weld -a -led or anything like that. I mean, the way you're going to install these properly and put hangers on the piping system, you're never really going to have that deflection, right? But just know that there's safety factors built in in case you have any of that deflection occur within a piping system. So you can see the strength and integrity of that joint. But of course, you know, Maybe we put Colton on it and he goes back 37, 40 times back and forth and back and forth, which would never happen in a real piping system. Then you could see probably something like go, but you could see right there in a dynamic system, you know, even with pressure and stress on there, it's not going to pop out. It's not going to leak, you know, if you're following the proper installation procedures. So that's again, just us going above and beyond the performance standards. I, I can't believe it, but that I'm going to just switch the camera and um, just sh that thing is even the one that I yarded on before is still holding. <laughs> I mean, that, it's pretty loose. If I go over there, I can wobble it. So, I mean, yeah, obviously we want to keep stress off the, the, the pipe. That's the point, you know, that's best practices. You wouldn't do that whether it was a solder joint or welded joint or whatever. You just wouldn't do that. So, Again, it's picking up that speed. There's always going to be things you need to understand about the system and the performance. You know, we got a couple of questions that came in. And uh, one of the questions is what size chuck on the uh, Milwaukee, or excuse me, not the Milwaukee, the rigid or Vega adapter. If it's not SDS, I had a Milwaukee drill, but 
you've got a three eighths inch drive on that. So, and it's a standard SDS, not SDS max, if you choose the SDS option. So uh, should be able to run it right in your cordless drill. No problem. It's an inch and 16th hole. So uh, not much. Another thing is the wrench that I use, the box end wrench I use to tighten the pipe vise is an inch and 16th as well, ironically. Uh, so you can use that as a gauge to see if you have the right hole saw. So just a little precision tip there for checking your size of your drill. Um, and then another question was, do you have to back it up? Absolutely. We'd say that too with mega press, you know, I mean, I just rotated this fitting here where the gauge is, but yeah, you want to back up your fittings. Absolutely do that. So yeah. And, and again, you know, that's common sense. And just, just to show for Troy's sake here, and I'm going to switch cameras again. Actually, I'll just stay on this camera. This is the packaging. Okay, so you can see that's the SKU number and you can see it tells me the pipe size and then it's the, the tapping, okay, and the schedule of the, uh, the system. I think I have to hold it still to get it to focus. But this is how they come. And then inside the little box is, just so you can see in there, it's actually in a, I'm trying to look over my shoulder, ridiculous. Uh, it's in a little plastic bag. So nicely packaged and six of these will fit inside of the, the kit. Yeah, and that's a, that's a good point with backing it up. I mean, you should really be doing that on every type of assembly, right? That's just good industry practice. Always use two wrenches, double wrench, back it up. I mean, if I'm doing a complete threaded system, I'm backing up the assembly, right? So you're going to want to do that because you don't want to torque on there again. You know, um, good industry practice to follow and you won't have any issues. So definitely back it up. Well, that's about it for... for uh questions so looks like we're we're good to go is there anything else you wanted to add there troy oh no i just want to thank everybody for tuning in today i'm excited actually to continue tech talk live but moving to the instagram platform just because the community the interaction the platform you'll actually be able to see bo and i at the same time it's just the the platform itself just is more user friendly we'll be able to add guest hosts and different people like that we're going to be doing more you know, workshop live demos from the New Hampshire Seminar Center and the Colorado Seminar Center. Uh, maybe bring some of our other trainers on as well as so you can you can see their faces and get to know them because they all come from the field and very talented um, and all have different specialties and different backgrounds. So really great. So no, if, if there's no other questions, Bo, I mean, this is great. Um, I think I might, you know, when we get back to running, I might miss the lockdown in the garage, but you know, I'll still come in here and drink some beers and and FaceTime you. <laughs> sounds like a plan, man. It sounds like a plan. I love it. I love it. Well, yeah, thanks everybody for attending today. Hopefully you got something out of this. Hopefully it was credible and real for you. We're not trying to pull any wool over your eyes. We're not trying to fake you out. We know what our systems will do. We're very proud of the Vega brand. We're very proud to wear the Vega name. You know, remember, do you even press bro? I mean, come on, got to get on press, you know? So we want you to see the real deal. So we really appreciate you giving us this opportunity to kind of lay it out for you. Um, so last thing, if you've got ideas for an episode of Tech Talk Live, you can email Troy and I at techtalk at vega.us. Again, it's techtalk at vega.us. You can also check out the Vega Rewards Program, another really cool way to win some cool swag because if you give us a good idea, to use on Tech Talk Live, we'll give you a shout out and we'll send you some cool swag. Not the Vega Chopper, but it'll be some cool swag. Maybe some high vis leather gloves, but send in your ideas to techtalkatvega.us. Also, vegarewards.us, it's a revamp program. It's fantastic. If you buy Vega product, you get Vega product. You can even use it for training trips to come out here and meet us and hang out with all the trainers and do some of this hands on torture testing and a whole bunch of other really cool stuff that you're going to get a preview of in a future episode of Tech Talk Live. So that's coming. Last thing for our folks that are from uh, Quebec, French Canadian, please don't hesitate to email us at techtalk at vega.us and we will be happy to get your answer, your questions answered for you. It is not going to be Troy or I, neither of us uh, speak <laughs> French, but we do obviously have French speaking people in the company 
that will help us get the answers and you're going to get it straight from the mouths of Troy or I and uh, you know you can't go wrong and if we don't know the answer we know who to ask so that's it thanks for attending awesome have a great night Bo have a great night everybody see you on the next Tech Talk Live see you soon <laughs>